Mouth Meal. All right, guys, we're back for another special episode of Fourth Meal. Very special. Headliner Music Club presents. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Can we get the famous hot. uh can we get the famous drop and that kind of introduces you? If you, if you watch this man's stream, you will know this one. Ready? Go. Yeah, dude. We <laughs> <laughs> that is the guy they call fashion. Fashion. What's welcome, up, guys? Dan back, Dirt bro. himself. Welcome back. Uh, Thank you. Dirt Deluxe, that, DJ5 and Fashion. Wanna once again remind you of the code for those of you that haven't tried out HMC, headlinermusicclub.com for your edits and remixes and, and new tracks, um, get half off of the first month by using the code word HMC podcast, all caps, no space, just HMC yep. podcast all together. And Damn. yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. What up, Fash? Nah, man, last time I did a podcast with you guys was pre-COVID where we all sat in the studio. Wow, Back like we're all ago. able to hang together in one room and and be on camera together. I know, right? Damn, that's crazy. Um, damn, I miss but, those days. I know, same man, same. I miss our our set when we had the our podcast set. Yeah, I know. Now it's, everything's all down. We have to uh, break everything down just to make room for you know streaming. But it's also <laughs> besides besides that, like uh, now every time we do a podcast is like about streaming <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah, we can't get have, away from it <laughs> we, we had we we would have djs come by and like oh like what's going on how's your schedule yeah. this that what was the last gig you did it was mm -hmm. like great stories and now we're like oh yeah i feel i feel like the last time like the last time i did a podcast with you guys we were talking about like uh opener etiquette <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 no for sure and but, then now it's just like <laughs> what opener there ain't no more opener for us no no for now. opener but the good thing yeah. is that we're we, we're sitting here with fashion and and you have done a, a few uh gigs right uh yeah did i've done four total uh uh three at the same oh. venue uh in oklahoma yeah. and one in austin Okay. Oh, yeah, and right. then, and then you obviously stream, you stream like at least three times a week. Sometimes you'll, you'll pop up more so mm -hmm. we can dive into like all that. We can see, all right, actually, you know what? Um, James Vickery, uh, handles the HMC Instagram and we posted last week, like any topics or whatever. And AO Romero, the homie, which actually like tunes into a lot of the streams. He asks, um, at this point, would you prefer streaming or doing a gig? And I want to see where uh, fashions heads at with this. One. I, I mean, honestly, I, I I really like both. I I love um, I love the human interaction with uh, uh, doing a gig. And and, uh, and, and let's take let the ob let's take the obvious. Yes. Out, the, which is okay. money. Yes. That's the obvious. Like we're gonna yeah. be like, oh yeah. well, I'd rather do a gig because it's more money. Yeah. <laughs> So let's take that out. Like let's leave that out completely. Yeah. So that's okay, out completely. Okay. Besides the money, would you prefer? Because obviously, that would be my number two. That would be yeah. my number two. No, because we do miss making money. You know, yeah. the stream. Yeah. We're lucky enough to monetize a little on Twitch, which is a, a blessing. It's it's great. Helps mm -hmm. cover a couple bills, especially if you're you're consistent. You're making more money. The more you yeah. stream, the more you make. Yeah. Um, and the bigger you you build your support system, the more yeah. you make. Right. So every every DJ makes a different amount on yeah. Twitch and it's all up to them at this point. It's not, a, this is what, what's cool about that is it's not about a rate. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has the same rate. It's yeah. called you kind of get out of it. Yeah. You get out of it what you put into it. Yep. Exactly. exactly. So, so this is not about rates and no one's making more or no one's making a higher amount than the next DJ, but it's, a, it's, it's on their community, what they built community wise, yeah. support wise, yeah. the amount of hours they put time they put. So, so that's one thing. So obviously um, we're lucky enough to have that, but yeah, so I guess other, other uh, stuff, like you said, human interaction could be one of the things, right? So, so yeah. go, go ahead and finish your, your <laughs> answer. Before I <laughs> yeah, no, your ass off. no, but honestly, that was, that, I, I appreciate that you said that too, because that would have been the second thing I miss about club DJing, which is making, you know, my Why club not? fee. But, um, but number one, I think it's the, it's the actual physical human interaction and being with my friends, you know, hugging, you know, like you guys being out, hanging out with you guys, taking shots, you know, like, and, and just being a, in that atmosphere, you know, it's like, it's fun streaming. 
Um, and like, there's nights that like, cause we, I mean, I feel like I'm drinking more now. Than, Dude, you know, yeah. I, I say that, uh, someone was like, Oh, you must be like uh, enjoying this break from like drinking. drinking. And I'm like, what are you crazy? I'm drinking yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's insane. And like, and so like, I will, there'll be nights where I'm literally like, I'm throwing them back and I'm like having a good time and I'm in it and I'm sweating. And I'm like, you know, I'm just, I'm working just as hard on a stream yeah. as I do in a club. And then I like put my head up and look around. And it's like, I got one dog asleep on the sofa and then like the TV's on with like a, something on the background. And it's yeah. like, it, it, it just, the vibe is like, which you're, I'm sure you don't mind you being home with though. the pups. No, not at all. I, yeah, I, tol yeah. I totally like it, but like, but it, it's so weird to like, you're just like, normally, you know, your head's down in your, in your equipment and you're like doing your thing and you look up and you see everyone just like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah into it. And then now I look up and it's just like snoozing animals, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like, oh shit. But yeah. so I do. So I miss that element of the, you know, just the physical contact, human interaction with my friends and you know just people i haven't seen in a while but yeah um it's a, it's just a different kind it's a different kind but i do appreciate the fact that as soon as i get done i'm like i'm out turn the computer off boom i'm in bed no plane no airplane no yeah. hotel exactly what are what are some what are some things of of doing gigs that you don't miss just that like i don't that miss travel go, yeah Tra yeah, I don't miss having to go to the airport and do the security and then this and that. And, and you, all, you always take the first flight out too because of the pups. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, nice. Yeah, I always, I always took the first flight out. And so, um, and actually the few gigs that um, I did do um, so far over COVID, because at the same time, like I play, I play very safe. Like I go by the guidelines, like the, the cities that I went to, their rules and restrictions were, were um, I, you know, based, it was based off of their rules and restrictions. Like California was still locked down at the time that I went to Oklahoma. And I mean, like they didn't even have mask mandate and stuff. And so it was just kind of like, uh, it was a little, it was a little sketchy going. Like I was kind of nervous, but um, it was chill. I came back, I, got, I did my tests and everything and everything was all right. And, um, but even then it was the same, it was the same vibe. You know, you get to the airport, you have your mask on, you know, all the stuff that you got to do. And just being on the flight was a little more sketchy, but I didn't miss any of it. It was, like, yeah. I was just like, fuck, like I don't yeah. miss this parking and walking and waiting on Uber and this, that, whatever. I don't miss any of that shit. But mm -hmm. I mean, would I gladly do it again if we all get back to normal? Oh, by all means, I'm just like, bring it on. Yeah. So back to A.O. Romero's question, what do you prefer? Um, For now, I prefer, I prefer the streaming because yeah. I know yeah. it's safe. I know it's safe. I know that, like I said, I'm home with the animals, uh, with the pups. Um, but all yeah, also, all, also, you get to play whatever the hell you want. Like this yeah. is thing about I love and, and shout out to Izzo. Izzo, uh, you're one of his favorites. Yeah, because he could love tell because he could tell that you you do dig and you do prepare. He'll be like, yo, he, yeah. he goes like the crazy, you know, the he loves your your uh, the uh, Robo Rock set, the Not Yacht, yacht, set. yacht yeah. Rock set. Yeah. Um, Robo, sorry, Robo, Robo. Rock, not Robo, <laughs> Robo <laughs> Rock um, Sundays. He loves that, and I love it too. But also your, you know, your random two thousands hip hop, or I'm yeah. gonna do, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do eighties, I'm gonna do, you know, new punk, 90, yeah. punk new wave, punk, yeah, punk set, yeah, like I you like really, that. you really dig and you put in work, man, and I, and I yeah. know that that's what makes streaming fun. Yeah. Especially yeah. for someone like you that's been DJing for so long and like you love music and shit. So yeah, it's actually a February, it's February one. So like, uh, it's now 31 years I've been DJing. I started in February oh, wow. of 1990. So wow. Wow. Congrats. It, it. So, but Jesus I get Christ. like, uh, I mean, like even today, like I did a stream for, um, for snapback today, uh, oh, I did shit. their, uh, their, uh, lunch table mix and, uh, I did a whole new Jack swing, uh, set with them. I did it for them uh, in um, August and I did the same thing. I was just yeah. like, oh, because I know it's like a throwbacks. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, eh, you know, and I did, I hadn't played that set in a while. Yeah. So like, but it is, it's like super fun to play music that you don't get to play in the club. Yeah, you definitely time. do a lot. You dig, man, because like every time I watch a stream, I was like, I always hear a song that like I've either never heard before or haven't heard in a while. Like, like your New Jack set, right? You played Brand Nubian. And I, I didn't even know they did a New Jack song. Yeah. Wow. There's a, there's a few. There's a few yeah, out there. Yeah. Like, it's so but, good. 
but that's one of the things of like during during COVID that I did, like especially early on. I haven't ha needed to do it as much now. I still dig for like my uh, for my yacht rock set and like because I wanted to do because yacht rock is such a narrow window. It, it it's like there's enough music there, but I didn't want it to be too repetitive. So I kind of like branched the show into yeah. more of a uh, yacht rock and then like uh, 80s soft rock because there's so many songs that kind of can work with that show. And I was like, okay, I don't want to just play the whole because it's every it's a weekly thing. So I'm like, I don't want every week yeah. to sound exactly the same. So how can I like just branch it out a little bit, change it just a little bit. But even like at the New Jack stuff, like at the beginning of COVID, like when we when we were first, like when we would talk and we'd be like, fuck, dude, we ain't never nothing's going to get back to normal. And before we even started streaming on like Instagram, yeah. I was just like, OK, now's a perfect time to go through my records and go through my crates on iTunes and this and that. And just what's trash? What am I keeping? What don't I have? What do I want in here? What's something I want to do? And I initially um, built that Yacht Rock folder just to do a mix. I was going to do a mix and I'm like, Fuck, I don't even want to do a mix. And then everyone starts streaming and I'm like, okay, now I can actually physically do this live. That would be even 10 times more fun. Yeah. And then like literally what was like a month, month and a half on Instagram. And then we went over to Twitch mm -hmm. and then, um, wow. yeah. And so now I'm just like, okay, how, what are, how can I build some more of these? What else can I do? So like I extended my eighties folder, my new wave folder, my punk rock folder. I was just like, let's just do all this. Let's just get it all done. And, and let's go all in. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you, uh, I think this is a really good question for you, especially because of your uh, theme sets. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it's a, it's challenging b doing um, being so spread, you know, widespread like that? Meaning, meaning like, you know, someone might discover your page during a punk set right yeah and they love it and then they pop in and you're playing like blog house or hip-hop and they're like what the fuck i thought you play punk yeah and like you know like you're dealing with different people all the time so is that a good thing or a bad thing because because i i've dealt with that for example that's why i bring it up but you're even crazier because you do way more genres than <laughs> i do but i'll do like a random house set whether it's classic house yeah. or deep house or a hip-hop or just some other hip hop and R&B, like I'll play like random hip hop. You, you might catch me playing Chingy in my stream. Who, who knows? It depends yeah. on what, what I feel, right? But like, I've, I've had moments where people like love the EDM energy, like Deep House, you know, all those records. I'm not going too big room. Like it, it's not the, the vibe for stream for like, for my, for, for what I do, but you know, some, um, some Deep House or Classic House. And then, that same person that discovered me that stream might pop in and I'm playing, you know, uh, fucking no Allegra. And they're like, what the fuck? Yes. Yeah, no Allegra <laughs> or something. And just kind of like, what the hell? So do you see that a lot in your chat? Like we're like, yo, what happened to the punk set or what happened to the blog house set or what happened to the, to rock set? Yeah. Every now and then, every now and then I get that. Or like, um, sometimes I'll like, I'll like start out like, like, uh, like, I forget, maybe I think it was last week, I started out kind of playing one ver one uh, genre and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna change it up in the second hour. Cause uh, um, for those who don't know my set times, I play every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday from three to five. Like I just do a two hour set It's, it's since the jump. I was just like, this is, those are my time slots. And then Sunday night, obviously I do the robot rock. Now, when I do robot rock, it's strictly that that genre. Like I, I, I try to brand it so people know like, hey, this is all, I only do this on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I've done it, I think two times. I think I did it on Christmas day or Thanksgiving day. I did a, I did a, a robot rock set on like, I think it was like Black Friday or whatever. I was just like, I'm gonna do it just because it's something different. People are home with their families, you know, older right. people, they can listen to it too and enjoy it. But for the most part, like I try to flip it up every time. And I want people to know that like every time they pop in, they never know what I'm, they're gonna hear. It could be different. Um, um that sometimes i've done like uh like maybe played like a house set on a tuesday and then i'm like you know what fuck it i'm gonna play a house set again on a saturday just because mm -hmm. yeah. you know it was a couple of days ago like i just i'm just into it that's what i want to do but one thing that, that i've also noticed too is um you know kind of kind of moving on to like the monetary part of that mm -hmm. like um like i was talking with my girlfriend about the other day she said what do you notice about like your streams that um is there certain genres that you play or certain shows that you play where you know, where you like, you'll make more money mm -hmm. or that, you know, that people more or less want to hear. And 
do you do you try to do those sets more or do you just say fuck it i just want to do what i want to do mm -hmm. and i was like that's actually a good question because i do i kind of ride the line it's like i know certain sets are generally um more traffic or people are they're more friendly to uh, some listeners but at the same time i'm like you know even though it's like that i still want to just do what i want to do it's not yeah. necessarily about the money it's just like which you know what genre works the best for you you think um monetarily uh just yeah or viewer or all over the board i think it, or I, or is there one that makes more money but less viewers another one more viewers less money is see, it varies it varies too like um sometimes like the sunday night set the, the yacht rock set yeah. will have more viewers and then um but i won't make as much money and then there's other nights where i'll do that same set and i'll have less viewers and i'll like make yeah. like five times the money I made the, the previous week doing the same set, same yeah. hours. It's crazy. It's so, crazy like that, man. Yeah. It just varies. So, um, but like how I branded that night, um, um, and you know, I've been doing that now for, I want to say like eight or nine months. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I want to do, um, like I just started this last Friday, just cause I've, I've been wanting to go on more in the evenings. Like I noticed like you guys stream more in the evenings. Most of my stuff's in the afternoons and then like my Sunday night. And I know mm -hmm. a lot of people like I, I always get a lot of viewers on Sunday night and they say, oh, you know, we're on the East Coast and we have nine to fives. And so we can't be staying up late. So I dump my hours back down to eight o'clock. I was doing it from nine o'clock to midnight. Mm -hmm. And now I do from eight to 11 just to give those people an opportunity to tune in a little earlier. And it's actually been really helpful. But mm -hmm. then this past Friday, I was just like, you know what? I want to go on on a Friday. I want to do some night stuff. I kind of want to do it because like, it, you know, I mean, God, before COVID hit, like we were mainly playing hip hop in the clubs, like yeah. mainly. Like other stuff too, but it was like 90% hip hop. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really done Especially like a lot LA. of those. Oh yeah, of course. And I haven't done sets like that. Like I've only done a couple sets like that over the last few months. And I'm just like, you know what? I think I want to try to kind of brand my Friday. Um, like an early set though. Cause I know Eric, I know you go on sometimes on Friday night. Five, you go on Friday night sometimes. I know E-Rock does, yeah. Bella Fiasco are more late. And so I'm like, I you know started what? A Friday. Yeah, so I'm kind of like, you know what? Maybe I'll do like a, so I started at six to eight. 6 to 8 p.m. And I'm kind of like a warm up, like the Friday night warm up set for everyone else. And it gives me an opportunity to just play those hood records that I haven't really played. And uh, so are you going to stick to that uh, yeah. Friday schedule? How did it Friday, go for you the first time? It was cool. It was just kind of like on a whim this past Friday. And then like halfway through it, everyone was like, dude, we're loving this. Like you should nice. do this every Friday. And I was like, hmm. And then by Saturday morning, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this every Friday. So nice. uh, this, this next Friday or like in a couple of days, that'll be the second one. Yeah. And I'm going to like try to go all out. Like you guys have seen how I branded uh, Robot Rock and have the different scenes yeah, and this, dope, that, yeah, movie yeah. clips and stuff like that. So I'm going to try to figure out a way. Um, I have some ideas I'm already kind of working on mm -hmm. right now, but same kind of thing. Just, just brand that Friday. Um, it's called uh, Ratchet Ass Fashion Viernes. <laughs> or fashion Fridays, so um, kind of, kind of, kind of model it, or not model it, but like uh, theme it around like a like a strip club. Mm. So I'm already nice. like trying to pull like fun movie clips from like strip clubs and stuff like that. Do some like cool things, with drops, whatever, whatever. Uh, the guy that did my artwork for um, my Sunday night uh, thing, he's gonna make me some artwork for nice. uh, this one, and to try to to try to you know brand it more like that. And so who I thought you did this stuff because I know you. Yeah, you I was I was also. thinking that too. Yeah, you're I do also most of really it. Hands on with all your design, and I, I for some reason I was like, I thought you did everything because it's all I, really good. Your emotes are good. Thank all you. Your overlays. Well, I, I some of the emotes uh, I did myself. He, uh, my friend Gabe, he actually did um, all all this all the stuff that you see that's not Robot Rock. I do, and then okay. he does. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does the Robot Rock stuff, like with the uh, the turning like yacht wheel and like the. The sailboats that are moving on the thing like he did all of that stuff so he does so like animation stuff he does all kinds of animation stuff nice. and whatever but the, i do all the like the movie clips and like the yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff okay. like that it's just the overlays and stuff like that that he yeah. did and then he did a few of the emotes like the oh wow and like the yeah dude woo and a, and a couple others the, okay the lfgo the let's fucking go like he did all those so yeah it's really um, good yeah, no, he's really good super and he he hit me he was doing like flyers and stuff for like some of the clubs like in boston like and he just hit me out of the blue and was like, man, if you need any like help, like with any stuff, this is like early, early Twitch. He's like, if you, you know, he's like, I'm just like looking to like, just, you know, practice some things and, you know, just like keep my, my time busy. And so I think since then he's gotten some other DJs on board and he's like starting to do some work and stuff. And then 
he helped me design some of uh, that merch. I have a, a um, I don't know if you guys want to see it. You guys want to yeah. see the towel? All yeah. right, hold on. Hold on. Look, give me one second. I'm going to grab the towel real quick. Shout out to the guys watching on YouTube oh, yeah, uh, yeah. that are not just doing the audio, but <laughs> make sure you guys go watch this All right. video. All right. So we have this, uh, this towel coming out. This is all based on just a Sunday night set. Right, the, right, the, right. The, so this is the official rowboat rock towel. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. That's so, crazy. Nice. It's got like the emotes on it. Oh, like nice. The emotes that I use. My logo. Dope, dope. What title. is that about? Uh, I don't know. It's been <laughs> the sample's been ready since October. Oh, so you <laughs> just got the sample made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got the sample made, but it's good. It's like this is like some stuff you find at like Neiman Marcus. It's like all soft and shit. Anyway, I think we're actually gonna have them out like before the end of the month. Dope. Nice. Yeah. On the so. lookout. Yeah, definitely. I need one of those, bro. Come on now. You know I got you guys. I've got my shot glasses and mugs. I think, but that's what I'm saying. I think that's the good thing about the streaming world and, and not just that, just being able to be creative and like branding stuff yeah. is you'll, you'll be able to pump merch out of it. You know, yeah. if you, well, just, not only that, if you just kind of jump on, jump on and DJ is cool. Cause yeah. I do that. That's kind of what I do. But if you kind of brand something, then yeah. you're able to like take advantage of it, you know, cause people yeah. become, a fan of your show yeah, and yeah. and then next thing you know it's like oh shit okay it's like uh it's like concert merch it's like yeah. it's like theme park merch like yeah i went to you know i survived fucking uh <laughs> what, what's space the, mountain yeah space mountain or whatever i uh what's the big one at uh magic mountain what no this the superman thing or i, I haven't been there in years i don't yeah, even know you know like you would leave like with, with uh yeah, souvenir. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. not even merch it's more like souvenirs right yeah um, but yeah, like you said, I was able to, people love my shot time emote. So I said, Fuck, yeah. I'm going to throw a shot time emote on a shot glass. And then the other side has my logo and dude did very well where people still ask me to restock. Yeah. And the smart businessman would want to restock, but it was a nightmare <laughs> to, <laughs> to fulfill those. Shipping, like, yeah. Shipping glass is not easy. So yeah. I might remake them just like uh, plastic shot glasses. Yeah. It'll be cheaper for me, cheaper for the, cause I'll you sell do like a 20 pack too. Yeah. I could sell like a five pack and it'll, yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll cost, it'll, it'll um, cost the customer less mm -hmm. shipping will be easier. So, but things like that, five, yeah. I know that five de dealt with the same shit. He did mugs. You know, I think you had a third party, fulfillment. I had a third party I, fulfillment. Yeah. So but if, if you would have done that, it would have been a nightmare, but, but a nightmare, I would have made more is, money though. But the yeah. point is, is uh, you did a pour over morning show yeah. and guess what? A, a, a mug goes hand in hand. And exactly. People, people li I'll see it because five reposted people will post listening to five while drinking coffee out of the, their pour over gang mug. Like Miles Medina drinks coffee or, or actually I don't even think he drinks coffee. He'll, he'll drink his tea out of your mug. Yeah, I see <laughs> on his stream. So. Things like that is very important for like the branding stuff. Like I talked to Four Colors Act, which we had on the well, two episodes ago, but but he you know he's really good. There oh wow, there you go. You there got you both go. of our merch. Yep. There you go. See. Oh yeah. That's the good. So Zach, I had I had three of these and I broke two of them. Well, actually, I broke one and then one of them uh, got eaten by the garbage disposal. Oh, shit. <laughs> I've done that many times. Um, no, but I was saying Four Colors Act uh, early on. You know, he has a, a big um a segment called mash mountain where he plays mm -hmm. his really bad mashups that he finds and people love that shit so he he did a a mash mountain merch yeah. drop like early twitch and mm -hmm. he, he was like bro honestly i did it as a joke but it sold more than i expected i was like yeah yeah, yeah. i got one i cop one because it's a piece of souvenir so yeah. it's like oh, and that's just it i was saying like you, you're connected like with with, the, with these streams like you're connecting with an audience that's unlike the audience that we connect with in the clubs in the clubs they come out and they're like they know like they hear eric deluxe or they hear five and they're like oh i went to tau or i went to uh marquee or, or wherever and i and i heard eric deluxe and i know when i go to to when I know that I, when I go to a night that Eric Deluxe is DJing or if I was DJing, right. I know that they're going to play this specific music and I know what kind of night I'm going to have with the friends that I'm with or whatever like that. And th to them, for that audience, it's more about the memory. It's about the, 
Um, I'm there to, I'm there because I know that this is what these guys are going to do. Um, and that's, that's their connection with you. It's not about like, Oh, I'm going to Tao so I can buy a DJ five t-shirt. Yeah, I'm no. going to marquee to get yeah, a it's different now, uh, from, from Eric Deluxe. It's about that. It's about that, that moment. Whereas on here, we're connecting with these people more on a personal level. And just like you said, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, it's like you said, it's a souvenir. It's like, I went through the pandemic. And I was a yeah. supporter of Eric Deluxe and I got a shot glass. And I'll always remember that this shot glass happened during the pandemic. 2020. And <laughs> with, the, with the mug, you know, like yeah. they'll always remember like, hey, remember when they tell their kids, mommy, what's it with that mug? What's this mug? What's the pour over? Oh, yeah. Well, when I was locked down because of COVID, like I drank out of this and listened yeah, to this. Yeah, it's going to be a really good day. memory. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, you streamed on Saturday, right? Yeah. Okay, so Friday, uh, L.A. County or California in general yeah. opened up because we we weren't even able to eat outside, get coffee uh, outside, like or sit at a coffee shop outside. Yeah. Um, and Saturday, I can't remember. Was Saturday nice or was it raining? I think it was nice. No, it was beautiful, beautiful day. Okay, Saturday. So, so Friday was raining. Being yeah. that yeah. Friday, everything opened up. Saturday, it was a beautiful day. Did you notice? less viewers um I, I'm, I'm 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 trying to understand i'm trying to see where the yeah when once everything opens up we yeah. obviously love streaming we want we want this to stay we want to yeah. do it forever because we even if it's once a week just doing say you you're back to your norm, normal schedule and you're traveling but mm -hmm. then you have sundays off and you want to do your your ro uh, rowboat rock set at least yeah you you want it to stay right it's like a yeah of course tea music outlet right yeah so, um i want i'm wondering what's going to happen when life is a little more back to normal or even now that things are yeah. open and people are eating yeah. out and enjoying being outside because they were stuck yeah. for a few months inside so yeah. did you notice anything saturday i did notice a, a small dip but also there were people like I had people actually chiming in who said they were like actually out on the road and they were watching it yeah. on their phone saying, Hey, yeah. I'm at a restaurant right now, whatever. And even before I started my stream, I had to go uh, send something out um, on uh, Larchmont. Uh, I had just, I went to the mail store there and I'm driving down Larchmont and they had all the restaurants on Larchmont had all their like, um, all their like tables out. Yeah, there was yeah. like Tents. faux brass. I mean, it was beautiful and it was packed. I mean, Larchmont yeah. was popping. It looked like COVID never hit. I was like, I loved it. it. It actually was a really good feeling. I was like, damn, here we go. Like, and I'm and in my mind, I'm thinking like, please people just, just do your part. Like, you know, like when you're, when you're eating, do your thing. But like, when you're done, like wear your mask, you know, like follow the guidelines so we can keep it like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I am. I do think that like, if it does stay like that and things do stay open, will people, like you said, will, do you think people are going to like, be like, ah, things are going on now. I will probably maybe not, you know, participate in the streaming as much. And I do think that is a definite uh, uh, thing um, to consider, but I don't know. I haven't really thought of it um, as much like that, but I, I do think, think that we, we have generated a whole different audience. Yeah. For sure. And so no matter what, once we get back to normal and we start going back to clubs, yeah. that audience that we once had that like, there's, there's only a handful of people that like, I know from clubs that tune in to our streams. And, and I mean, a very, a baby's hand. I mean, like, yeah. one hand. No, I can count like one, like hand. one hand. Yeah. No, same, yeah. same, same. It's very but, small. The people that support you in clubs to get your free alcohol or get into a club free are not supporting our stream not at all like no. this streams the stream support is so real it's so different and it makes yeah. you really like look back like all right when i do get back to avenue or marquee i'm gonna remember who who fucked with me during this whole year of not having work and who's popping back up to be in my dj booth drinking yep. my alcohol you know yeah yep. like it's, it's fucked up like yeah. and, and, and it's not to say like sure like people not everybody even knows about twitch yeah. yeah but uh, uh, i'm talking like not even checking in on text like how you doing bro like you know yeah i'm talking completely disappeared yeah i mean we are, every dj that's listening right now has people like that in their life so yeah this is that's a very relatable thing but i feel like we do have it's like two separate audiences now whereas 
before we only had that club audience and now we have that club audience and then we have a streaming audience and it's like it's like two separate audiences and, and it's like I feel like just like you said what will you continue to do it after or not I feel like I owe it now it, to an extent I owe it to the audience that I've built yeah. over over COVID to, to just not desert them once things go back to normal either and right. at the same time the audience that we built playing the music that we play you know or at least me like I never had an audience like that I could play like yacht rock to all the time or punk rock or like an 80s set all the time. I never had that audience in a nightclub. It was always just the same yeah. ratchet music with the ratchet people. And, and, and I'm not, a, I'm not, a, you know, dissing that. I love that too. But, um, and let's be honest, it's when we were DJing in clubs, we're dealing with GA and bottle tables. We're not dealing mm -hmm. with people that are there to see us. Like, let's none of us are that popular where yeah. like we're not calvin harris yeah you know so we were always catering to people and now people are there to see us because yeah. yeah. they have options yeah you you open twitch at any given moment there's thousands of djs on thousands of on now man there's a lot more djs so many djs if you open your app on a saturday night depending on who you follow i oh, remember yeah. someone was like one of my friends was like, oh shit, it's a Friday or Saturday night. They're like, oh, go on, no one's on. I said, no one's on. I opened my app, <laughs> people I follow was like 60 people on. I was like, yeah. what do you mean no one's on? And he goes, well, no one I follow. And I was like, <laughs> it's just like, nobody. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's the thing. And I think that like a lot of DJs that haven't streamed yet, they might be afraid of streaming because of, you know, viewership or whatever. But like, dude, there's some nights where I don't have that many viewers. Yeah. And that's when I have the most fun, and, I, and yeah. when I feel the most that when I feel the most connected, yeah. and, yeah. and and it's all you also appreciate every person in there. You're like, damn man, like they fuck with you. you. Be watching anybody, and you're watching me. Like it's such a fulfilling uh, feeling. Like yeah. it it feels so good. Like say a DJ is watching, and, and he has 15 people. Like instead of saying, damn, I only have 15 people, it's like, yo, like there's 15 people that committed Dedicated, to, yeah. to watching you look at it look at it like this if you were djing in your living room and there were 15 people sitting in your living room the pretty watching you room. dj yeah <laughs> you're kind of like yo it's kind of popping off in here yeah so like you got you do you got to kind of look at it like that like you're right like there's the nights that like that are like i'm not gonna lie like la like um last sunday like on my yacht rock stream uh, i got raided by melody and he brought over like 180 people or something. And I was just getting ready to pop. Like I was getting ready to be done. Like I, it was like 1030. I had like 30 minutes left and I actually played like an extra 15 minutes. But I was just like, dude, I'm done. Like I spent, I just did three and a half hours. My back hurts. I did because I just went <laughs> running before. I was like, fuck, man. But I stayed and I was like, dude, all these people came over. Like, fuck it. Let me stay and hang out for a little bit. And then last night, last night, like 11 o'clock hit and I'm like, all right, guys, I was like, and I looked to see who's on, I'm like, Melody's on, time to return the favor. So I sent everyone over to Melody. And then as soon as I get on, uh, Melody's girl is like, we just got a raid from Fashion. He's just like, what the fuck? He goes, dude, we were just about to raid you. I'm like, oh, no, 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 yeah. no. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I'm done. That happens I'm done. quite often. On, dude, on I'm done, I'm done. Especially with Mello. Mello's raided me before, and I'm about to be done, and I'll end up DJing an extra, like, three hours. But he'll yeah. be in there having fun. And that's such a legend. Yeah, where you're yeah. just like, you damn, Mello's in there watching me, like, I used to sit there and record this guy on, on the radio, 92.3, the beat. Not just that, before that, I would watch him on VHS yeah. doing routines with the beat junkies. Like, it's such a crazy feeling, bro. And then even like last night, like, like as soon as I get over there, he's like, oh man, he's like, I got, oh man, I gotta, I gotta stay here now. He's like, oh, he's like, fuck, he's like, fuck. And then his, his girl's talking to the audience saying, oh, you know, we were just about to get out of here whatever. And then he put these two records on and he was just flexing. He was just beat juggling his two records for like five minutes. And then everyone is just like, what the fuck? He's going in, he's going in, he's going in. And then he got raided again, like five oh minutes later. God. He's like, oh, I'm never going to get out of here. And I'm like, dude, you're like flexing. Like who wants to leave you right now? Like well, everyone's watching too. you flex. That's the thing too. Like obviously he's he's an incredible DJ and flexing, yeah. but but when you get that raid and you and you see that type of um engagement in the chat yeah you beat off that yeah. Like, if yeah people are like if begging you to keep going like 
that shit it's like an encore at a cl- yeah. club no one tells us no one's like in front of our like oh, yeah. keep going please like obviously you'll get the people that want to keep partying but yeah. like it's such a dope feeling when people yeah. just want you to keep going and you're just like fuck it let's go Trust me, if he would have beat me to the punch last night, I would have played another hour, maybe two hours. Yeah, it's easier to do that at night when you're drunk already, too. You know, like oh, for yeah. sure. Because for me, yeah, for me in the morning, if I get a raid, I'm still gonna raid someone else. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm yeah. out of here, dude. <laughs> but that's different because, like, you know, your your show ends at like noon. You probably still haven't eaten yet. You got yeah, shit exactly. Yeah. But at night, you're like, fuck it. I'll yeah. just sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> I'll go to bed when I go to bed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but no, I think, I think, uh, I think you're right. We were talking about when things open up I, that people, it's a different audience. A lot of people yeah. that, that watch don't even fuck with being outside in the first yeah. place. You yeah. Know? And I think the, your, I think the viewership will go back up to me. I think because some, a lot of DJs that hop on now will probably stop streaming. That's I true. I guarantee you it will drop. That's true. Too. I mean, you know? I have like, I'm not going to say who it is, but like, I have a friend, he's a DJ and like he jumped on Twitch and, um, I started subbing him and supporting him and he doesn't even, de- he doesn't even stream anymore. And um, he's just doing clubs right now. Really? Luckily, oh, luckily, really for him, luckily for him, he, he's got a club to go at. And then I got like a, I got like a twitching the other day. It's like uh, y- your resub for so-and-so just happened. I'm like, motherfucker ain't even streamed in two months. And I was like, delete. Bro, I thought you were going to say scratchy. <laughs> no, I deleted well, scratchy three months ago. <laughs> Yeah, I don't sub to Scratchy. I'm only gonna sub when he streams. I, I stopped. Su- I stopped subbing Scratchy when uh, I was just Mario Kart. I'm like, dude, I can't sit here and watch Mario Kart all day long. I'm sorry. <clears throat> all right, let me uh, go to another question from from Instagram headliner music club Instagram at Prem with a with a three instead of a e underscore underscore. Um, what's advice for DJs to make connections during the pandemic? Wow, that is. A question just so i that do you know what's crazy like connections to me is like i've connected with so many people on twitch yeah in chats yeah. and and i'm not gonna put names out there but there's a few djs that we've met that are really thriving that like they have they have made many connections and one of them like is about to get a radio show from it yeah, yeah. oh yeah you know He's about to get a radio show from it. And this is from him being super cool in the chat, being a great DJ, uh, supporting us. We support him. Uh, uh, opportunity came for someone who was looking for a mix show DJ at a, a really good market. Mm-hmm. And that he was he was top of mind. Yeah. And I think I think if you just support pe- people, they'll support you. And, and that's yeah. kind of like a way because because if you mean if you mean connections by like bookers and and promoters and club owners like i don't know like a lot i don't i don't see them i don't know where they are that's kind of tough a lot of them are like either got furloughed or laid off too so you don't know who's in these clubs anymore you know yeah Yeah. and then tough man we you you just kind of have to wait that out to see when things open and then go from there but as far as like making connections like connect with other djs because other DJs have opportunities that they can't fulfill. And if they like you, and if you're a good DJ, they're going to co-sign you. Yeah. yeah. That's happened to me many times. I've done that for people many times because, you you know, it, especially like you, you can tell right away when people are just fuck with you and supportive and good people and, and, and people just want, are using you and need you. And I'll give you a perfect need- example of that. Um, the, like the whole raid thing. I'm sure it's been brought up in some of the other... Um, some of the other uh, podcasts you guys have talked about since it, we started talking about or started talking about streaming, but actually we we never talked because I know you had really? a really good stream where you mentioned this. So this is actually we never talked about this. Yeah, it's just like there's uh there's there's people that like 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 even last night like there's there's I mean good good people good good people like I appreciate it and some but sometimes people just reach out and they're like yo man can you raid me and I'm like bro like um one I've never seen you in my chat once. Like not once, and and then I got other people asking me to raid other people. Like, yo, can you raid so and so? And I'm like, yo, that person's never even been here. Why would I give him my audience mm-hmm. that I've literally just been working on for someone that hasn't even came over to support? Like, why would I support them if they ain't been here to support me? Like, I don't even know who they are. Like, you know. And it just if I stumble upon someone, 
um, and watch what they're doing. And I'm like, yo, that dude was dope or whatever. And then in the back of my mind, next time I'm like, yo, if I see that guy on again, I'm gonna look out. Cause like yeah. that dude was dope and like he needs some viewership or could yeah. do some love. But I mean, there's, there was a guy in my chat, like early on Twitch, right? And he was always like in my chat, I didn't even know he was a DJ, always in my chat supporting in everyone else's chat. And one day he's like, oh, I'm live, blah, blah, just raid me as a joke, right? I'm like, you know what? let me go look at his page. And it was like the funniest stream I've ever seen. I rated him. And now, you know, he's constantly mm-hmm. live on Twitch and uh, he just puts on a funny show. He twerks on a bed. That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not. Yeah, good, good dude right there. But yeah, but that's the thing is like, he was always showing love and yeah. supporting streams. And, and that's the thing is what I mean. Like, like, dude, guess what? We're in a pandemic. What are DJs doing? Streaming. Find a way yeah, to like, show them love if you're giving someone love like in a chat it's a different feeling like a dj streaming is going to appreciate that and and he'll remember your name and and yeah like you said one day he he might see you on and need to rate someone and no one he knows is on and you might get that raid like you just never know what happens so i I would say that's the only kind of way because other other than that connecting with people is really tough because Most markets are shut down and, you know, some people don't give a fuck and some people are really sketchy about yeah. being around people or being outside or no mask or, you know, we know a few people like that. We know people yeah. on the other side that don't give a fuck. So yeah. that one's a really tough question, but I would say, you know, where the DJs are, go show them some love. <clears throat> you know, I'm not saying you drop subs in there, but like, just be cool, be friend, be supportive, be friendly. Like one thing that I do, I try to do it at least once a week on, and sometimes on several streams. If I see, if I have a, a stream that I'm doing and I see that I have a lot of DJs that are in there and usually you can tell just by like, you know, I mean, I mean, I don't have DJ in front of my name. You don't either. Five still does. But like a lot of times I'll look in, I'll see how many like names are in there, like in the, in the, and I'll be like, oh, there's DJ, 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 DJ. And I'm like, man, there's like a handful of DJs in here. And I'll always be like, yo, DJs have at it. The, the, the comment section is all you go ahead and plug when you're going to be on Twitch, let people know, you know, and then I'll be like, yo, go over there, follow them, give them a, at least give them a follow. Even if you can't tune in, like you said, you know, you don't yeah. have to give them subs. I'm not going to tell anyone be like, go give them money. Like I don't tell anyone that, you know, you spend your money how you want to spend your money, but like, yo, like it doesn't hurt. It didn't cost anything to give someone a follow. And, you know, it's just like, yo, anything I can do, you know, to help a DJ out that's, that's, that's spending some time on my stream. I'm going to at least do that. For sure. All right. Uh, at DJ Zim underscore Z I M M. How should a new DJ to the scene approach bars or clubs once places start opening up? Kind of goes back to the other question, but yeah. I mean, it's tough. Yeah, I don't it's know. Tough right now because uh, yeah. The one a depending on where you're you're uh, you're from, Zim is like I don't know when things are opening up. Yeah. That's the, that's another like we don't. We don't know what yeah. to expect when we're back to work. So, and once and things that, open up, I mean, we got to assume it's going to be last night's uh, DJ. I don't know. It's going to be tough, man. One thing I think about like on that, on that thing, sorry, five is um, like, look at it like this. I'm a, let's just say like XYZ nightclub has in a specific, like in a, a, a like a, a top 10 market has 10 DJs that are constantly trying to get in there, but they have their two or three DJs that they rotate. That's their, that's their crew, but they're, you know, they're kind of maybe a little pricey, whatever, but they still like, yo, those are our guys. Now after COVID, they're maybe like, yo, those guys were kind of our guys, but they're a little pricey. And if they aren't going to come down on the price, we're going to go to that next group of three or whatever and be like, yo, you guys in at this price, whatever. And so for to, to, to try to be an entry level DJ after COVID, like, I almost feel like you could possibly have more of a benefit if you are just up and coming and you're just trying to get your shine on yeah. and the club is like, yo, like we don't have budgets right now because of COVID. We're like just trying to recoup losses. If, if they're not going to book those guys that they had before, you might have it in there, but at the same time, it could work the opposite way. They're just going to be like, look, dude, we're going to go back to our family before COVID and we're just not touching no new DJs. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, I've seen a few markets that have been a little odd. Like, thankfully, when I the, the two markets that I played in, both in Austin and Oklahoma, both times I went, they paid me my rate, my regular rate before COVID. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, thank you. Um, and I, I it, it was a real concern for me. I'm like, 
you know, like, damn, like, is it going to get to a point where these places are just like, nah, fuck it. And then, um, but the one dude, he was like, look, man, he goes, um, you know, sales are the same. Uh, gen, the GA is the same. Like nothing's changed. So wow, they're just like, why would man? They're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, why would we change what we had? You know, if, if nothing changed, you know, it, I, I could see it'd be different if they're like, yo, we had to cut our drink prices down. We had to slash this, we had to do whatever. Then I could be, um, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do that. But yeah. in the how, meantime, how flex, not to cut you off, how flexible will you be with your rate? Once things, once you start getting gig uh, offers, like, I think, do you have like a, all right, there's a certain number where like, I'll leave the house for, like, I'm not going any lower than that. Or are you saying full rate only? Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, that's a tough question. That's a tough question. I think some markets, I'm just going to have to be like, dude, I can't, uh, like, I just can't do it. Cause it's especially when they're traveling markets where like, you know, like some of us traveling DJs, like some of us in some of the gigs you get, you get, uh, you know, they cover oh, yeah. your air for their airfare or this, that, whatever. And others, like you said, they're all in, they're like, Hey, we're going to give you X amount of dollars. It's, it's on you to get here yeah. and whatever, whatever. And if, if the money doesn't add up, if I'm spending more on expenses, then I, then I'm going to make yeah. What, it just doesn't it doesn't financially make sense you can stay home and live stream and exactly you know. yeah but by the time all, he, you pay for your flight and hotel and agent fee and money you pay for taxes and whatever all like you'll make more on a stream yeah, yeah. and you're just like yeah in your boxers <laughs> we need Box, a boxer briefs <laughs> yeah, that's porky piggin <laughs> uh big rue DJ Big Roo, that's the homie. He said, uh, in LA County, a lot of bars and venues have new management due to COVID and outdoor dining just opened up this week. Uh, what would be a good way to reconnect with management while respecting social distancing and not being too pushy about providing DJ services or entertainment? Well, crazy thing is they can't even have entertainment right now in LA County. Yeah. That's, that's it's strictly part of the opening. Yeah, it's strictly food. It's strictly yeah, food so- only. Yeah. So that's the thing is a, there's, there's no DJ services yet. Um, one good way, I think as far as like bars and lounges and whatever, like, um, one good thing is like showing them support and love. Like for example, um, if, if, you know, Tao Avenue's not open, but Tao the restaurant's open, go have dinner there. Guess what? They're going to see you supporting their business because they all need the support right now they're going to see you eating they're gonna you'll slap hands with them or air air dap whatever you want to do but like they'll see that you're eating at their venue and that goes a long way you know yeah uh things like that um h wood group if if bootsy and poppy aren't open but like petite has carry out whatever like order it and then tag Tag the owners or tag whoever yeah. you know at that works for them, so they see you're supporting them. Uh, if Nice Guy or Delilah's open, go eat there. Uh, there, you know, there's a lot of ways of kind of showing them like, hey, I'm still he- here. I'm still supporting your guys' business. You know, even though clubs aren't open, that's kind. That's a really good way, I think. Obviously, some some clubs and lounges don't have food, but. You know, I think yeah, there, yeah. there's a way, as long as you're showing people that like, you're there to support them too. And not just, yeah. not just take it's give and take, you know, yeah. so I'm sure they get a shit ton of uh, DMS, you know, like on their accounts, whatever on IG, like, yo, you know, you guys look for DJs, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. Thousands of it for sure. I think that's a good way, man. Just showing them that you're there to yeah. support them during these. Cause everyone took a hit, all of us, all of them. Yeah. Every security guard, waitress, bartender, yep. promoter, that's like you name life. it, man. So, yeah. I think that's, and, that's a good way to reconnect. Just like it's as simple as supporting them. And even if it's order out and then tagging them, like, yeah. you know. And then not only that, you got to think too, like think of all the people that took up hobbies. Like once you went into lockdown, like, I mean, we've been in lockdown for almost a year, you know, for the most part, especially in LA. I mean, we've had stay home orders, you know, off and on for, you know, nine, 10, 11 months. 
Yeah. And so you just think all the people that just said, and then look at all these like uh, like DJ companies, you know, that are like uh, guitar centers and all the places that uh, sell DJ equipment. They had like crazy deals and like financing and this and that on like DJ equipment. People were like, fuck it. Like if I'm going to be home 24 seven, what can I do to kill the time? And now people did, yeah. they went and bought equipment and stuff. And so now they're just like, yo, I've been like practicing in my bedroom for the last nine months. As soon as COVID is like, you know, as soon as stuff's open, they're just like, yo, I'm gonna try to get a gig. Mm -hmm. It's like, fuck. All right. You just, now the market is just that much more. DJs out there hungry, trying to like whatever. A lot of DJs. Yeah, yeah. It was even impossible to get a webcam, remember? And capture cards and all yeah. kinds of premium capture equipment. Yep. Wild. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's all we got for now, but we'll be back next week. And keep sending us any questions you have questions, or topics. Yeah. Send them to Headliner Music Club. Slide up in the DM and, and James writes them all down. Yep. Hold on. Before, before we get out of here, out. Guys. What you got there? Oh, you got them right Hold there? On. What we got, Fashion. What you got, dog? Oh no! By the way, fashion's new apartment is insane, bro. I'm oh, looking. Dude, at yeah, I, I visited him a couple of weeks ago, man. Is that a like, is that jury is that jury chairs? Is that a courthouse behind you? Uh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> some that's, artwork. <laughs> that's cool. Hold on, let me let me know. Can you guys hear this? Can you hear this? No, no. Put turn it up louder. Hold on. I think it's because my headphones are in. Hold on. Can you hear it now? Uh oh no. Hold on. No, no, it has something to do this. Hold on, try this again. Perfect. It's there shot a clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's shot a clock. All right, you ready? We're going to do this? That means you're doing a shot, bro? I don't have yeah, a shot. Let's go. No, 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 no. Let's go. <sighs> I'm drinking coffee, but I love you. <laughs> I got my shot time shot glass. Come on now. <laughs> oh, <damn laughs> All right. Wow. You're I would do it, but I, I'm about to drive fashion. You know, we don't drink and drive around here. No, nah, we don't. Cheers, we don't. bro. Love you. Cheers. Here Appreciate we... you guys. Thanks for having me back. Let them yes, know your schedule you. one more time on Twitch. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, 3 p.m. PST to 5 p.m. Fridays, beginning pretty much this week, brand new, 6 to 8 p.m. for Ratchet Ass Shit. And then uh, uh, Sunday nights, Yacht Rock, my robot rock show, 8 p.m. PST to 11 p.m. PST. There it is. Wow. Make sure you guys catch his stream. You won't be sorry. Very Five days a week. He gets Schweck, Schweck West. Hey, live Schweck West, you die Schweck West. <laughs> this means they're about to go live today. <laughs> yeah, dude. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Yo, thank you, Fash. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, Fash. Oh, wait, let's do a, a picture. Oh, yeah, let's do a photo. Oh, let me end this, and then we can do a photo. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We out. <laughs>